Right then, looks like we're live, and I think hopefully we'll be able to hear Michael, who will know in about 10 seconds that he's live as well, when the uh, chat catches up. So hopefully that will all work, and we'll be able to get going. So this morning we're talking about... Yay, Michael is there. Michael is joining us from Canada. Um, we're having a look at the trains that Rail Driver now supports in the core update. Now, I've, I've picked some particular ones. Why can I hear my voice feeding back from somewhere? Hopefully you guys aren't hearing an echo, but I am. I'll put up with it. It doesn't seem to be going out on the chat, so it should be fine. Ooh, my levels are a little high too. Let me just pull that down a bit because that's probably distorting like crazy. Okay. All right then, so we're having a look at the rail driver. Now I've picked um, a particular particular bunch of services to play just to show you how different some aspects of the rail driver are. But before we do, it's probably a bit crazy trying to do this live. And I was going to make it bigger, but I think I've just discovered something else that's hard to do with the bloody trackball. There we go. This is a rail driver. And we have a, a bunch of controls. It's modelled on a American. <laughs> <laughs> it's modelled on an American locomotive. Looks like the webcam's finally going to focus on it. The um, little wooden train is not part of it. That was from a friend of mine, Archit, who uh, decided I like trains, so gave me a train. But anyway, uh, it has a bunch of controls on it that are, are pretty standard across the board. So there's only one train in TSW two that uses this, and that's the one hundred one for um, TBL and for Diesel Legends and for Somerset Railway. Um, emergency stop seems to be pretty universally supported across the lot. The alerter is sometimes supported, sometimes not. It's kind of sad. I actually don't use it. I use the Q button on the keyboard. Um, sand seems to always work. Bell seems to always work, but only in American locos, of course. The park brake button never seems to work. So that's, that's universal. So do I. The horn lever does seem to work with high and low, although sometimes it's low and high, and sometimes it works one way and not the other. The... I am definitely hearing my voice coming out of somewhere. Where is my voice coming from? Oh, I found it. <laughs> my own phone was watching the stream. Um... How sad is that? The reverser is mostly forward and reverse and neutral as you'd expect, or idle in some locomotives. Um, but you're going to see some today that there's some variations on that. The throttle has a throttle on and a dynamic brake range, which is normally just that. But you're going to see some variation in that today. Brakes are normally released at the bottom applied at the top and if you cross the little detent i don't know if you'll hear this or not then there's an emergency brake area that has some variability too but that's okay nearly every loco uses a brake that way except one uh hearing some keyboard action from you there michael i think this is the direct or independent or locomotive brake depending on what part of the world you come from and it's normally always used for oh, sorry Sorry, Matt. It's normally always used for just that, the direct, independent, or loco brake, depending on which part of the world you come from. But you're going to see today that in some cases it's used for AFB in German locomotives, which is kind of like cruise control. Wipers, I'm pleased to say across the board now, wipers actually seem to be used for wipers. And lights, again, across the board... Lights seem to be used for lights now. Now, they do still have some crossover problems between these and particularly the brake, where for, there's no readily apparent reason you might turn on the wipers and it puts the brakes on. <laughs> They're getting there. They're getting a lot better at this stuff. And one of the reasons I bought Trainsim World 2 ages and ages and ages ago was because it had rail driver support or did it. It's, um, because this is about rail driver, I'll make it a little bit bigger than usual. So I'll just leave that there. Um, when it came out, it had no rail driver support at all, and there was great sadness and gnashing of teeth. But then they started releasing it for new locos, 
and people were starting to get happy. So let's just jump into one of the recent additions. So in the last core update where we went to Unreal 4.26, it also had a heap of other changes to the game. Uh, some good, some not so good, but one of them is the Rapid Transit, which gained rail driver support. Uh, I think I have to go into that one. Oh, I've got to have some clouds, got to have some wind, but I'm not going to bother with rain today. September's fine. And we want, there was a short one I picked that was good for this that doesn't actually explode. It's S1, 10 minutes. Is it that one? No, that one's the one explodes. Maybe it's that one. I think it's that one. We shall play this one anyway. There's still a disturbing number of services that just catch fire, fall over and sink into the swamp. But uh, mm -hmm. it's getting better, I think. I don't think it got worse with the update. I think it's getting better. So if we welcome to our rapid transit machine, let's just... Uh... Oh, the other thing is the, the rows of buttons down the bottom. Now, I've made button sheets. I just think you can, you can probably see that. You don't need to be able to read it. Um, I publish those. They're available for anybody that wants them. I always update them every time new trains come out. But I have to say, because they're variable and they're different for every bloody train and there's almost no consistency whatsoever, um, that's getting better, but it's still almost none because every one of them is different in some way. I don't use them. Which is kind of annoying because, you know, in the other games... They are just something useful, and they just work. Just going through these. So all these things I'm doing at the moment actually have got rail driver equivalent buttons, but uh, we want to go around the other way. Anybody else play this game with a trackball? I've had to move over for trackball for some other reasons. Hang on. Let me change it. Right. No, I don't want it isolated. I want unisolated. Do I want isolated? I'm going to get up and go look at these things. Because <laughs> I want PZB and CFAR to be on. So PZB is on, I believe, and bridging, and CFAR is on. Okay. And the reason I want those on is because I want to use them. Now, let's unlock the doors. There's a rail driver button I use, because now it's nearly always left D-pad and right D-pad. They've got that one right, so that's really good. Uh, so... Direct brake, you think, would have something to do, but no, it doesn't. But our other brake does, and it is doing the right thing. So the more I push that up, the more it's applying. We have our normal throttle and brake over here, which I think is actually that one. Yep, it is good. So we'll just leave that sit there. We can't do anything at the moment anyway because we haven't locked the doors. So let's lock them and get have a watch them lock. The rapid transit uh, machine to me is the most like a tram in this game, I think. So reverse it a forward, release the brakes, and away we go. Now I've got PZB turned on, and oh, I can't see that screen for nuts. Great. That's going to make PZB more challenging, isn't it? Aren't we moving yet, game? We've got power. The brakes are off but we're not going anywhere. That's a good start. Uh, let's just try all the PZB reset things and see if that does anything. CIFA? No. Wish I could see the screen, but I can't. Hmm. I actually think it is moving just really slightly. But it should be moving a lot. Brakes are definitely coming off. This is a good start. All right, let's give it a little bit of break. You know what I might not have done? I think I have released that. But let's just make sure the pantograph is actually up and the circuit breaker is actually closed. Ooh, that uh, that did something new. See, a pink KN appeared there. Maybe that's what was wrong. All right, breaks up again. 
Maybe that was just me and I didn't put the panto up because I'm so used to not having to do it. Yep, that was me. All right, good. Most services start with the panto up and the circuit breaker on, but uh, this time, no. Okay. Hey. So I've got to watch myself because we have to stay under 45 kilometres an hour because we're in PZB monitoring. So this one is using the usual throttle, as you would... Uh-oh. <laughs> I hadn't noticed that. Coming up on 40. So getting, to... a, getting a little buffering. Are we? Uh, I'm not dropping any frames at this end. Hopefully it will be okay. Anyway, I will keep going. See for again. Oh, I've got to go. All right. Good luck with your call, mate, and hopefully you'll be able to come back in. I'll leave it open so it'll let you back in. Okay. And stopping for this station. Unfortunately, Michael's had to drop out, folks, because he um, makes a living from taking support calls, so it's incredibly important that he takes them when he gets them. Doors are opening up. I still like the way this station's modelled. And they have done some improvements on this route, I think. It just looks better. I don't know if that's because I run it in 2K now or if it just looks better. But anyway, all good. Doesn't have the new passenger numbers in here yet, but it does have the new clothing. The game is very quiet, isn't it? Let's bring it up a bit. All right, let's get going. We're not under monitoring anymore, so I should be able to go up to 80 kilometres an hour. If anybody's got any questions about Rail Driver, please feel free to sing out in the chat and more than happy to answer things. If it's something I can show you, I'll be more than happy to do that too. Sifa. Coming into the next station. And we'll open the doors up with Rail Driver again. Now we're going to do a short run in each of the trains or locomotives that I've chosen just to have a look at the different implementations of Rail Driver. So I started with this one because it's one of the relatively normal ones. And it's natural there's never going to be a complete match of train to Rail Driver because Rail Driver is a mimic of an American train. Did I lock them a little early? Oops. There we go. Let's wait for that to turn green. Okay. I think I'm hearing the doors of another train closing there since mine already had. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Lots of the trains have a timer where you can't go from brakes to throttling straight away, but some of them want you on the throttle before they release the brakes. You just sort of have to figure out which is which. Excuse my hiccups, it's rude.
heading towards our next station. Next time that comes up, I'll actually try. Yeah, I can hear it's doing something, the alert button, but I'm not sure if it actually responds to Cifra or not in this one. No, I don't want any brakes. Now, you notice that the brakes are coming on just before the idle position. So that's not because my rail driver's not calibrated, it's because Dovetail are incredibly inconsistent about their, their setup of the levers across the different trains. It's kind of like a different person from their team sets up rail driver every time they set it up and they all do it a different way. Oops, I was gonna press the alert button that time, I forgot. And because they behave that way, we end up with different implementations. Now they've standardized on a few things. So um, startup is usually that one, master key in most trains, brake key in others. Signaling and warning devices is normally these two now. So they're getting better, but they're still still very inconsistent if you look at the button mapping. And if you want the button mapping, I've got a um, Word document, which is printable, which fits in the key labels. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, that cover comes off and you put the key labels in here for your various buttons. It's currently got uh, TS 2021's labels in it because they're consistent. They're the same with every train. And I have to say, with all of the other simulators that I play, like Run 8 and Trains, they're all the same too. Okay, off we go again. I think we're almost at the end of this particular service. Yep, looks like it. And then we'll be switching over to the next one. So on the next one, we'll be changing countries. And looking at a, a different train completely. So we'll be heading over from electric where we are now and electric passenger and going into diesel freight. We'll be doing a little bit of shunting. Still didn't press the alert button. I'm so used to just reaching out and whacking the Q key. I'd like to press the alert button. I'd love it if it worked properly all the time. Because you can't rely on it, you don't really want random train stops. Got a yellow signal coming up, so I'll have to acknowledge that with PZB. brake can come down to 55 kilometers an hour or PZB will stop me but I've got to stop for this station anyway in fact PZB is stopping me anyway but will we make it into the station no <laughs> okay are you gonna let me go or is this gonna be a quick end to this service there we go. All right, so it is going to let me move, I think. And I think this is the last station on this service anyway. If anybody else plays with PZB, I'd love to know if you find it as inconsistent as I do. I struggle with when exactly when you should be acknowledging. So this time we'll be opening the doors on the right. Same control, but we're using the right-hand part of the D-pad. And let's have a look at our task list. I think that's it for this one. And of course, there's collectibles here that I haven't got. Oh, that finished me. Okay, all right, let's go on to the next one then. If anybody plays with the trackball, I find it works wonderfully well in the menus. It's not so hot in the game itself. So now we need to go and find Peninsula Corridor. And then we're going to have a look at a freight service. Somewhere around here. There it is. Peninsula Corridor. And we're going to jump into the timetable. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's just use this. 
Let's have a little bit of rain, why not? And we're going to look at the GP38. And we're not going to play that one because that one doesn't work. We're going to play up two, which is... Uh, that's the long one. Where's the other one? Hmm. I've lost the one I was going to play. That's okay. Outbound yard duties. That'll do fine. The inbound yard duties one, you end up at a red signal and you can't get past it. So that seems to have happened since the update. So they were doing work on Peninsula Corridor now. I've submitted feedback. We can hope that that will change. All right, let's start setting this up. So we've got to put our reverser in and start turning on our train. So I'm just turning on all the things that let you drive. Now, this is one of the ones that doesn't remember your settings from other games. So we've got some brakes. Now, that shouldn't have done anything because as far as I know, the brakes cut out. They are. Well, how about that? And this should already be set to lead, which is fine. And our independent brakes should be released. So we've got... A proper independent brake on this train and we've got a proper service brake which we can release and naturally enough apply sitting up in here we have got that one turning on our warning devices and we've got a couple more switches to turn on that one all right now we can operate the reverser with the rail driver. Or we should be able to. Why is that in throttle one? So, I don't know if you saw that then, but I've just operated the reverser with, so that it's re working as you'd expect. And then dynamic brake is this side of it, even though it's two levers and throttles this side of it, which is kind of what you'd expect, really. So let's brakes off. And we'll go and cruise and set up this train. I find the rail driver is most predictable with the US locomotives. I'm about to run through a set of points that are not changed for me. Oh well. That's a little bit of wiper action. It's very strange the way the rail driver does the wipers. So each thing seems to invoke some kind of scripting behind the scenes. You'll notice it when you close train doors that you'll see the door close button just getting pushed over and over and over and over again until the doors actually close, which to me doesn't seem like the nicest implementation in the world. if those points are set I can't remember if these ones are set right or not it's very hard to tell in fact I think they are set for me yes they are so even though we've got two locos here so I really should use the train brake I'm just going to use the independent because one loco should be able to stop both of them. That'll do. All right, so now let's go and change those points. I'm just going to use the eight key. So I've just gone to the external camera because you can interact with the world to some extent. Oh, it's one of those sets of points where they don't actually work sometimes. Come on. Do it. There we go. Third try, Lucky. And back in the cab. Now, interestingly, you can hear the dynamic brake hissing away. That's just bollocks. G'day, mate. How you doing? Very quiet. 
All right then, let's start heading back. So changing the reverser with the rail driver. So it makes it much easier to drive in other directions when you're not facing the controls because you know what the controls are doing because you can see them. Kill that bell. Throttle off. Looks like we successfully got through those points that time. Occasionally you fly off into space on them. As we get closer, I'll be using the independent again. You can use the train brake. And with two locomotives, it's a bit of an iffy situation. Do you use the train brake or do you use the independent? If you had more than two, I would suggest using the train brake always. The other thing that's handy about the rail driver when you're driving hard free and you're not watching your own controls is you can see what has your speed. And the reason I prefer the independent is because it goes on and off very quickly. So it's a lot easier to control than the train brake. But if you try and use the independent with a train, you'll end up in trouble very quickly. All right, we would appear to have either coupled up or bounced off. That suggests that we're going to have to jump out and have a look because Maybe the knuckles are closed. Huh. Yeah, they're both closed. All right, let me press the release button. I only have to open one, but we'll open them both just for the hell of it. All right, let's try that again. the train pump up now we have quite unrealistic brakes in this game but we are pumping up now 62.7 on the back so let's put the reverser into forwards using the rail driver turn off the bell because it's annoying and we'll release the brakes now in a real loco what you do is independent on full Reverse it to neutral and throttle to one or two just to help your compressor pump the train up quicker. I don't know if it makes any difference in um, the game itself, but being a little bit realistic is nice. American trains usually go up to about 90 pounds, so we're not far off. We probably could actually release the brakes and move at this point. Back ones would drag a little. So the two different gauges we're looking at here, I'm looking at this one, which is the, the brake pipe throughout the train, but reality, it's only the brake pipe at my end. You have to remember that the other end goes up much slower. This is a short train, and this one's showing the brake pipe at the other end. So you can see it's lagging behind by about five pounds. On a long train, it would lag much more. So let's go back to idle, go into forward, release our independent brake. So that red needle dropping down is the cylinder, brake cylinder on this locomotive. And off we go. Now it's a freight, so we go for a nice gentle start so we don't break couplers because they're not light like passenger trains are. 
This game doesn't do coupler breakage, but again, being realistic is not a bad thing to do. Other simulators like Run 8, if you um, pop it into something like Notch 8 on a big long freight train, you'll just snap couplers in a few places and then you'll have to go and fix them. Which I kind of like, to be honest. So you give it some power. I usually go to Notch 2 and I let it stretch the train. And once you feel that stretch happens, you can actually feel the cab move forwards and backwards in a real train, but in this thing, it's you sort of see it in the graphics. And then you can notch up again. Your objective is to keep your train stretched all the time. So if you're going downhill and you're <coughs> braking, you would actually use another rail driver combo, which is the bail off, which releases the brakes on your locomotive, even if the brakes of the train are on. That just helps you keep the train stretched out. You do lose a bit of braking power though, so if you're on something like sand patch, you probably wouldn't want to do that because you won't be able to control your speed. This train's got the bug where the last thing you do on rail driver gets stuck on the screen sometimes. It's the alerter. I can hear that pressing the button, but I'm not sure if it really does. Let's have a look. Yeah, it does. It's a bit slow, but it works. up again now. It's an American yard so the speed limit will probably be about 15 mile an hour. When you're driving without most of the HUD, so if you've got the HUD on, you get to know what your speeds are. Well here the speed's actually 10. How about that? You have to use your route knowledge, which in my case is a bit lacking on this route because I haven't played it for a while. And those would be red signals. Sitting up there in the distance. Now this train should stop relatively quickly, so I won't break just yet because it is only a little shorty. So it should be okay. Think we're stopping anyway. Must be going uphill. What I did there would be about the worst thing you could do on a train. Throttling back up from a near stop. You'd be better off stopping and then throttling up. Just so you don't break anything. Now has this one got the new radio feature? Yeah, we've got both our locos working. No, this one doesn't have the new contact signal or radio feature, so I'll have to do it this way. No route available. Alright, shall stop there. You can see our brakes on there going up. And the bail off thing I was talking about, if I use the bail off on the independent brake, you can see my brake cylinder on the locomotive goes back to zero. But the train train brakes are definitely on because you can see that 
zero and dropping that's at the back end and that will drop to match what's on the front here you can see that's more or less stop dropping now it's slowing down what are we waiting for it's all reds there can we change these points no they are controlled ones so i can't do anything about those are there any other trains? There's nothing up towards San Francisco. What about the other way? I don't see any other trains, so I don't know what we're waiting for. There's that thing there, but that's just sitting in a yard. That's a loco by itself. That was next to where we started. Do you want me to go that way? Not the way I'm facing. So it wants me to go backwards. Well, that's interesting. I had assumed it wanted me to go that way. Hmm. All right, let's see how these points are all set. Just figure out where it wanted me to go. So, that one is straight, which will take us past that loco, which is fine. What about these ones? They're straight. Which one will be on there on the outside, won't we? We want to be on the outside, which is where we were, I think. Well, that's kind of funny going the wrong way. There you go. Off the map. We should get to see a demo of this now. Into reverse. A couple of big honks. Brakes are released. And off we go back the other way. Kind of surprised it wants us to go this way. That seems unusual. You can hear that the brakes haven't finished releasing down here yet. They're still squeaking. I can watch my speed with the rail driver, which is handy, because I know we're fast approaching our 10 mile an hour limit. the same dodgy old horn.
pretty wet. I thought we asked for light rain. This is a monsoon. I like the way it's working with the headlights, though. I've changed some settings in my engine.ini, so the lights are now set on a distance of 150, as far as the Unreal Engine is concerned. Which is nice, because they stay on forever. Here's the alerter. It does hurt your frame rate a little, though. Yeah, down to just below 50. I used to live in the Bay Area for quite a long time, so um, I know this is actually modelled relatively nicely. It's, is it an exact building for building? I couldn't tell you that, but it's um, it's got the flavour. So it feels nice, it feels right. I can also tell you the Caltrain services do reflect the actual slowness of Caltrain. in there properly. All right. But we can watch as though we're a shunter from here. that the rail driver does help with immersion a lot. Almost there. Just making sure there's nothing behind us because sometimes the stop markers mean stop the back of the train on the marker and sometimes they mean stop the front. for amusement because I like the noise.
that'll do. Currently sitting under the Caltrain Freeway. Highway 101. Oh, where does it want us to go now? Back where we came from. Woohoo! The question is... Looks like it is actually managing... Or is it? No, it's not managing the points. It's just showing me my path. That one's right. That one's right. That one is right. And then we're on the managed ones. That one's right. And that's going off onto there, which is what we want. And then that one's right. And that'll take us up there. So we're going to cross the main line by the look of it. Good -o. Into forwards. Release the brakes. And we can start throttling up just gently. Stretches the train back out after that stop. While the brakes release on the back. Ends moving now, so we can give it a bit more grunt. almost finished anyway so let's go back to germany briefly we're gonna have a look at the br101 oops wrong back switch route and we're gonna go to h h r h r r sorry there it is Hopstrickrhein Ruhr. So this is another older route, which has recently gotten rail driver compatibility. A cynic would say it got rail driver compatibility because of the new German route. That's probably true. And we want to play... I see... Well, how about that? That one. I'm deliberately playing short ones so we get a, a bit of variety. I'll have to play that San Francisco one again later on on my own and uh, see if there really is a signal there. Maybe there's a little ground dwarf or something like that. But all the points were set, so I don't really know why it would have been red. So let's start setting stuff up. Let's do our headlights and... Pantograph, even though I think they're probably fine because we've got power up there. We need to do our... Why did we have some throttle on? Oh, of course, from the other train. So that should have let me change the reverser then. We should be able to unlock the doors now. Yep. And now I have to figure out where Cifer and Co are on this train. It's CIFA, BZB and CIFA. There's not much point turning on LZB. I don't think it's actually got it. And I don't think we need to change anything up there. That's fine. 
back to the big chair. Oops, before we jump in the big chair, we need to do something you can't do from in the chair. Which is... RFB, RFB. Turn on AFB. So we're going to see which levers are which here. Where my reverser is on this loco. I kind of thought it was that, but it's not. Störung, Störung. But it does seem to be working. Let's do the brake key. Direct brake is released, so in this train, the direct brake handle does what you'd expect it to do and operates that. The train brake operates the air brake, which you'd expect. The throttle going into dynamic operates the electric brake in this train which is again something you'd expect and throttling is that one which um, doesn't leave you anything for AFB so in this train you have to do AFB by hand so I'm just waiting for my just waiting for my lock indicator to come on which looks like this one doesn't have one okay I, would ex I was expecting that T to light up but anyway Let's, so we'll have to do AFB with the mouse on this one. Now I've got PZB turned on, so we don't want to go over 40. Brakes are set to release, but haven't. So I'm guessing this is one of the locomotives where you have to apply some power to get the brakes to release. There go the brakes. And we've got our power coming on. Now this should just accelerate to 40 kilometres an hour and sit there because I've set AFB. In the next loco that we drive, you can see the 70 and 85 flashing there, which means I'm on monitoring, which means I can't go over 45. Let's put our wipers on. So on the next train that we drive, which will be the BR413, which I have, sorry, 143, which I have to say is one of my... Let's see if the alerter button works for CIFA. No, it does not. So the alerter button did not cancel the CIFA. That's interesting. What are we pulling anyway? An ice train. So this is the other kind of ICE, apart from the... Um, that sounds like the plane's landing gear going up, doesn't it? I don't think we'll drive this train all the way to Essen. Because you won't get to see much if I do that. What colour is that signal? Not a signal for me, so it's all right. We've gone off monitoring so we can accelerate. I haven't seen any speed boards though. But I'm going to have to do AFB with the mouse in this train, aren't I? Isn't that boring? Let's go up to... Let's go up to 80Ks. Hopefully that won't trigger VZB. Getting some wheel slip there. A bit too much throttle. So we'll drive this one just a little bit more. See so you've seen how to use this one, and then we'll go and uh, do the one four three.
All right, that'll do for this one, I think. Gotten far enough. So we've seen that the AFB has to be done by mouse, but the other controls are fine. So let's throttle off with the throttle. Let's use the electric brake to slow down. And we can independently put on the air brakes as well. Note the air brakes aren't doing anything yet because this train doesn't right near the end of the braking. It's complaining about something that it's complaining in German, so who knows? And then we can put on the direct brake to hold us and release both of the others. All right, so let's jump out of this train now. That was the 101. The 101 is a nice one to drive, but I wish the AFB was controlled by the rail driver because now we're going to go and have a look at a different control style, the BR413. 143. I keep saying 413. And just for a variety, we won't make it rain this time, and we want the RE2. Duisburg. Waiting for this to load up. Okay, now this one is quite different to the others. Let's just get things unset because I didn't reset when I come out of that last train. So we have to put our reverser in with the mouse and then we can set it. But there's some other stuff I have to do with this train first or it won't go anywhere. Train line power on. Train lights on. That should already be closed. Pantograph should already be up. Headlights. All right, now we can put it into forwards using the reverser handle. And we should, after I do the brake key over here, which does have a button on the rail driver. At least I think it does. Our door should be open now. Yeah, struggling to get down in here today. Yeah. Doors are indeed open and there's a man stuck in them. What an unfortunate man. But anyway, um, brakes. This lever is the main brake. This lever. Oh, that's not doing a brake, is it? No, oh, let's come back over here. That's actually doing our speed selector. Which fortunately won't do anything right now because we're driving. There's a whole bunch of other controls that you can play with here. Um, I tend to leave those alone because it just gets all confusing. Now, I'm just going to zoom in on the passenger door button. So when we do the close, remember that thing I talked about where the, it just keeps pressing the button over and over and over again until they're closed? So our doors are on the right-hand side. I'll press the right-hand D-pad on rail driver. Press, press, press. There we go. And there's that T light I was expecting to light up on the 101 that didn't, just out of interest. And we have to wait five more seconds. That's okay. The train has released the brakes. So let's set our speed selector using the rail driver to 40 kilometers an hour. And we can see power's coming on now, so it's going to drive away. And we should probably see our monitoring lights come on. Oh, I didn't turn on PZB and AFB in this one. That's unfortunate. And guess what? They're down here. CIFA and AFB. I was pretty confident we wouldn't get tripped up then. Should probably put some headlights on, eh? The only reason I don't like this train, this particular loco, is because it's unreliable. It does weird things sometimes. So we'll take this one to the first stop using rail driver, and then we will switch over to another train which uses another control method. But we'll be staying in Germany for a little while. 
All right, we've come off monitoring, so let us speed up. I haven't seen a speed sign, so I'm going to set 80. Well, there's a speed sign right there, 150. So when the back of the train passes that, we'll be able to go up. This train can't go that fast anyway. I think it's limited to 120. So the back of the train just went past there. So let's crank it. So interestingly, the, the throttle in this one, which they could have used for um, the speed selector, they didn't. They used the independent brake handle. That's not very cool in my book. That's enough of that one, so we'll jump out of there. I'll just reset all my controls this time so I don't forget to do it like last time. And we will go back to the main menu and we're going to jump into a ice train this time just so you can see the, the next aspect of Rail Driver. And here's hoping I can make it move. Are there any ice trains in HRR? There are not. Okay, let's go over to Dresden then. So still in Germany this time. I could show you the Rosalini one too, because it's a bit funny. But where's Dresden? Where are you, Dresden? Where are you hiding? I hate this menu. I really do. It takes so long to find the route you want to play. Now we're going to have a look at this one in a tick too, which is why I come over to Dresden for the ice. Now I have a bit of variability getting the ice to actually move, so let's see how we go. You'll do, you're in daylight. It's a bit hit and miss in Dresden, because sometimes you spawn at a station without a train, so we'll see what happens this time. See if I picked a surface that works. Here's hoping. Any second now. I think Dresden is the slowest one to um, start up. We have spawned in a train, so that's wonderful. That's a good start. So let's do our reverser to start with. Let's get the power on. Uh, headlights we can do with the rail driver. And there is... I thought there was another thing I had to turn on. Maybe not. Okay, it's unlocked the doors, which is good. Let's release the parking brake. And, well, you'd think that was a direct brake, but no, it's not. So let's just apply some brakes. Let's jump up and have a look over here in the little box. Because we want to turn on CIFA, BZB, and LZB. And I don't think we have to turn on AFB in this one. I think it just works. Yeah, nothing else to turn on. Okay, there's our happy passengers. Oh wait, none. All right, uh, this is taking too long. Lock the doors. Get out of the doorway, you twat. That's what that said. All right, so breaks off, and we're going to use the 
independent to set the speed again, so 40, because... Uh, yes, I did turn on PZB, so we should have flashing lights, but we don't. And then we'll use some throttle. Ha! Oh, it's going to work. I'm happy. It's hard to remember how to get going in all the different trains. And as I get new locos, I usually write up cheat sheets during the tutorial. Looks like PZB has not come on. I'm not sure I turned it on. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So I just wanted to show you the difference in this one anyway to get going. So speed control is with the indirect brake. But the amount of throttle that you're applying is with the, the actual throttle. And the other side of this throttle doesn't do anything in this train. And we have our brakes on this one. So for the most part, relatively logical. It's the bug lap button. Okay, so most part relatively logical, except it's using the independent brake for getting everything happening. So let's just jump out now and let's have a look at... This is one of the new ones. This is the Blue 363. And this is the second last one we'll look at today, unless there are any requests. So it's a little 363. Oh, hopefully this is a service that works. And the reason I'm coming over to look at this one is because this one's a little bit different. Just a little. This one and the Arosa Loco have the brakes backwards. In fact, I better put that in the middle or it'll be an emergency brake as soon as we get in it. Ah, look at that. We've spawned at a station with no train. Well, not our train anyway. So let's try that again. My bet would be with this bug is when the Meissen branch line comes in, it will work and it will go to the right station every time. But until that comes in, they'll just say, no, that's a bug. That's all right. That's not working. Actually, let's play one that I've played. No, that works. It's a lot of loading screens to sit through. I do think Dresden is the slowest to load of all the routes. All right, so we're in the funny little 363. So this is this funny little blue shunting locomotive. This one, surprise, different again. Okay, so we've got a master key, which does have a button that you can turn on. Uh, let's just leave all the headlights alone, because we can turn them on with this anyway. There we go, got all the headlights turned on with one button. We've got all our PZB, etc. We've got a throttle, it's a clicky throttle, which means you um, move it forwards and release it. Got our reverser, so that works as you'd expect. You have to push the funny little button. And then we've got our brakes, so we've got a direct brake, which works the way you'd expect it to do. Pushing it up applies it, pulling it back releases it. So that's pretty normal. And then we've got this one, where pushing it up releases it. And if you go into the past the detent, you can overcharge the brakes. It doesn't matter when you've only got a loco, but if you do that in the train, you'll get stuck. Going the other way, which is backwards, you are applying the brakes and then you eventually get into emergency. I find that the changing the direction of this is so frustrating. It's just really annoying. But anyway, let's go for a little drive in this fella. So let's release him. And I think I've done everything we need to do. I'm not going to turn PZB on in here. There's no point. We're just shunting. See what I mean about the throttle? You have to move it and click it, move it and click it. There we go. Move it and click it. What have I not released? You're released. You're released. In fact, I think this is actually a lapping brake too. Yeah, it is. So it's a little bit like the 101. The British Rail 101. 
I don't know what I haven't done in here that's not letting it move, but you've seen the controls anyway, and that was the main thing, and we've talked about the backwards break, which was the main reason for coming in here, so that'll do for this one. Now, let's pop over and have a look at... What are we looking at now? We're going to TVL. Haven't made a TVL for ages. We're doing pretty well for time. Oops, I forgot to change routes. What a donkey. Switch route. And probably go this way. I could also show you the same train on the west of Somerset, I suppose, but I want to do it on TVL, which is here. Now, not all of the locos on TVL have actually got rail driver yet, but I'm going to show you one that does. And, of course, we're going to jump in the Gronk. So on TVL, both the 101. Uh, you'll do... It's want to be depot to T's yard. The 101, as in the British Rail 101, not to be confused with the BR 101, um, it has rail driver and the Gronk has rail driver. I don't think the 37 does yet. I could be wrong on that, so don't take that as gospel, but I think so. Okay, we are now in the British cousin of the loco we were just in. They're quite similar. Um, if you're a Victorian Railways fan in Australia, you'll note the V, uh, not V line, the uh, Victorian Railways F class. I don't think any of them survived into V line. So, Master Switch has got a button, but oops, that was on. And I stopped it. Oh well, I'll start it up again. All right, let's come back into on. That was already... Oh, come on. That was already in on. So we've got our throttle, which, you'd ex as you'd expect, is this one. Won't do anything at the moment because I haven't got the reverser in. Um, Brake-wise, we've got... Just need to turn the light on. We've got the independent brake, so release at the bottom, apply at the top, just as you'd expect. Uh, we need to cut in our brake somewhere. Or do we? I thought we had to cut these ones in. Anyway, we have got release at the bottom and apply at the top, which is what you'd expect. So we'll release that. And reverser is what you'd expect. Forward and reverse. All right. It's not the fastest train in the world, this one. And these points are all WSA levers, so you don't care if you run through them, because they just flop over. one over in the background there is the 37 which is, I think doesn't have rail driver yet going a bit quick for the poor little Gronchosaurus I haven't even checked the points to see if we're going to the right place red light and white lights I think we can go through that I think it's for the other track, not for us, so we'll make that assumption. Still alive, so this is a true assumption. motion this one makes me think steam will go okay when we get it 
throttle off. And we'll use the independent brake. Oops, not emergency. Full service will do fine. Or maybe I should have used emergency. So reversing, release the brakes, rail driver, reversed. Back we go. Very simple little train this one, no computer. It's very hard to get it wrong, it just works. You can drive it wrong, like I just did. Alright. Now the question is, which way does it want us to go though? That way, okay. Now what do you reckon, are the points going to set themselves? Well, there's no levers here, so I guess they will. a bit satisfying about the gronk. I'm kind of surprised it hadn't started beeping at me yet for going too fast. it <laughs> well, that's a quick service isn't it oh uh, well we still have some time left so let's go have a look at another loco that's a bit different uh, let's go have a look at a rosalini because this one's a different implementation again it's got the brakes the wrong way around and then we'll see how we're going for time and we'll have a look at something else if there is time there it is a rosalini little narrow gauge doesn't really matter which one we pick. Oh, it's January would be right for this one, wouldn't it? Oh, it's snow. I want snow. Okay. Uh, let's pick one that's likely to be in daylight. Three minutes. Oh, that, that's a long service, that one. Let's jump in here. Let's just reset all my controls. Some of the locomotives, the newest ones, so all of the ones in Dresden, except one, seem to read the controls of where they actually are. So I'm trying to remember how to set this one up. So release that brake. Release that brake because it's annoying and noisy. And then we got a key. And reverse it forward. We should be able to open the doors now. Yep. And we have our far and bremsen wheel, which basically means faster and slower. And we have we turn on our headlights. Now, what have we got outside, though? Come on. Let's go around the front. Oh, this is so painful. Yep, let's turn on the right ones. So the headlight switch did their job. Wipers are already on, interestingly, even though on the rail driver they are off. So what happens if we turn them to the middle? Alright, that gets us two annoying wipers. 
and off. So the, the wiper settings are backwards, basically. Hey, noisy, aren't they? Wait until 5140, which is fine. This train quite happily just sits here if it's not on a slope, so we don't have to do much. Now you notice the brakes are backwards in this one. So it releases at the top for the independent and at the bottom for full service. Which is kind of annoying. We can lock our doors now. And we've got our main brake already released. That brake's already released. And now we start using our throttle. It turns the wheel to the far end position. Go faster. And then we start going down this ridiculous slope. So we need to go into the brimson position to keep our speed down. They did eventually fix this so that you don't derail when you're using the uh, dynamic braking. Let's just turn that wiper off since we're in a tunnel and it's annoying. run this down to one station stop and then we'll go back to America and we'll go to a train that actually matches the rail driver and there's two of those there's the SD40s that are sprinkled around various places SD40s? no, sorry, the other ones um, and we've also got the, the new one, the ACS64 so we'll jump into that one. The signal just went black. Let's redone this ridiculous speed. fixed it. it used to be if you put the vacuum brake on the um, electric braking would stop but they fixed it all right cool that's enough for this little train and it's interesting the wipers stop making noise while it's making the braking noise i guess the sound system was a bit overloaded so let's go to our last train now we're heading back to america and we're going to be driving that. Okay, switch route. Boston Sprinter. Look at that. It's the next one right there. Let's jump into one of these. Let's jump into an Amtrak. Let's grab this one because it's in the middle of the day and we'll be able to see. Do you know the only time I ever got the Trainbow one in... Actually, no, I've had it twice. But the... the the first time I got the Trainbow train in Southeastern High Speed, the game crashed on me just before I could take a screenshot because, of course, everybody was screenshotting it then, going, hey, look what I got. All right, so let's put the handle in and put it to forwards. I didn't reset my controls, so they're all wonky. And we want the independent. And you'll notice that, hey, look at that. It looks like a rail driver, except it hasn't got it. We need a red handle, don't we? All right, we should be able to open the doors now. Did I open the right ones? Oops. 
Oh, that's right. In I did accidentally open the right ones because in this train, the uh, right and left on the rail driver are backwards. So if you press the right button, it opens the other one. Clever. Now this one has got the beast in here. So let's just jump up because I think the controls are back here somewhere to turn all this stuff on. ATC, Axis, and the Alerta. You can go back down in here too, but there's not much down here. There are some other controls down here, but I think you only need these when you're turning on the train. And since it's already on, we don't need to do anything. As soon as that buzzing cuts out as soon as you get there. I have to say, track driver, uh, using a trackball in this game, quite awful. But it's not their fault, it's Unreal Engine. Alright, let's get ready to close the doors using the wrong button, of course. Nexus hasn't come on. That's weird. Now we'll see what happens when we start driving. But I would have sought to see all that stuff lit up by now. No, so there's no point turning on any of these lights. That's really strange. Is there something I've not done, maybe? Because it's not... There we go. Oh, there is one something else I have to do on here. Somewhere, 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 somewhere. There's a brake thing I have to do. Brake mode. Passenger. There we go. That's what I had to do. Independent brake off. And Axis is telling us that we can go at 30 miles an hour, so we will. So the throttle behaves as you'd expect with pulling towards you being accelerating and pushing back the other way gives you brakes. careful to stay under 30 or Axis will uh, quite unceremoniously stop us. I'm not sure which one's harder to use to be honest, Axis or PZB. Alright, we're allowed to go up to 60 now, you don't have to acknowledge that because it's an upwards change, you only have to acknowledge downwards changes. And you have to start braking and then acknowledge it or it stops you. stay under 60. It's slightly more forgiving than the German trains. With the German trains, if you hit the PZB limit, it just stops you. If on these ones, if you get up to 61, 62, mostly it'll leave you alone if, as long as you start slowing down. We're allowed up to 70 now. So this is the last train I'm going to show off today. And I mainly wanted to show this one simply because it looks like a rail driver. One of the diesels does too, but uh, on Sandpatch and I don't think they're on Oakville. I think they're only on Sandpatch, the 4400s. They're a very similar configuration as well.
So if you want to see one of those, sing out in the chat, because this was the last one I was going to show. So I suppose the key takeaway from this is that um, the rail driver is quite different in every locomotive. I kind of don't like that, but I kind of don't mind it so much. I just wish they had a bit more consistency. So slow down a little bit because I'm sitting on 70. Um, I really wish the buttons were consistent because I find myself on I mean, this whole keyboard the whole double rows of X keys is just completely wasted. So they promised when they brought Rail Driver out that once it goes out of beta and it's been in... Uh, there we go. Axis is stopping me because I wasn't paying attention because I was talking. Don't know if it'll let me drive now. If I do that and reset, maybe it will. Yep, all right, it's come out of suppression. Let that sit for a bit and I'll be able to drive again. I think. Yep, there we go. Um, they, they, What they promised was that we would be able to set the keys ourselves. And I really look forward to that day because I will work out a set that's consistent to do what I want to do across all the locomotives and I will apply that to all of them. I hope you can do it in bulk because doing it loco by loco is going to suck. But anyway, that's life. Maybe it'll end up in a ini file or an XML file or something and you can just copy it from loco to loco with outside the game. That would be handy. But I'm, I'm not happy about the inconsistency across all the different locomotives. Just need to bring that speed down a little. So things like lever direction. Chopping and changing the levers, that's not so bad because the actual locos themselves are different, the cab's different. It's kind of okay. I think sometimes it's really illogical. Um, using the, in the BR143, for example, that German locomotive we looked at, using the indirect brake for the speed selector and using the throttle for nothing, that just doesn't make sense. Just use the throttle. Seriously. Um, the other locos where the brakes are backwards, um, I think that's probably just a mistake because one of the things that uh, they asked the community early on, it was Matt that asked this, he basically put out a poll and said, do you want the brake levers to always work, or all the controls actually, he said, work in the direction that feels right for them? So the natural direction is always up for on, down for off for brakes and acceler and throttle is the other way. It's up for off and down for on. Um, and about 80% of the people with rail drivers at that time, which I think was about six people, um, all said that they want to do it that way. So they did. But recently a couple of locos have come out with the brakes are backwards. And the reason that's bad is because, particularly on this one, there's a little plastic detent up at emergency so you can actually feel when you're getting close to emergency as you're pushing the handle up and you don't trigger emergency by accident when they do the brakes the other way around and the release position is emergency you just drop straight into it which is really annoying so you end up stopping when you didn't want to oh, we can go lots faster let's do that I'm talking and not paying attention I'm surprised it hasn't killed me so we've now switched over from access to ATC so that's automatic train control. The difference is one is um, purely about the local speed limits and um, civil limits. And what I mean by civil limits are things like speed limits for curves, tunnels, bridges, that sort of thing. So the track speed might be 125, but to go around that curve, you have to do 70. ATC does that one to you. Axis is the one that's controlled by signals. Or is that the other way around? I think it's Axis is controlled by signals. But anyway, watch my stream on Axis and ATC. That one's right. I've even had a driver come back to me on, on that one saying that uh, managed to figure that out relatively well. 
How's my frame rate in this one? Oh, that's not bad, sitting around 60. I've got my draw settings cranked up quite high. Particularly around lighting and shadows, so it looks much better. And there's not so much flickering from anti-aliasing of things, but it's... Uh, makes the card work, that's for sure. at 110 so axis has brought me down so it's axis that brings you down for the civil controls there you go so atc signals and axis is the civil controls i was saying the wrong thing a moment ago so axis just let us back up to 125 now I'm planning on it, but I think I'm just going to run this one to the end. Why not? Let's see how much trouble we can get in. ago back in 2000 I caught a train from Philadelphia to New York and I did my research I picked a train that was going to be in a cellar I paid for an Acela ticket because I wanted to ride the Acela and the Acela broke down and I ended up with guess what one of these And riding the Acela is significantly more expensive than one of these. And when I asked for a refund of the difference, I got a very New York response. Which was something along the lines of, You know what? You got here. No. We provided you a service, sir. So I gave up. I think it was that point in time that I learnt the difference between the east and west coasts of America. Because in the west coast they probably would have fallen over themselves to give you a refund and they would have given you a pile of vouchers and they would have given you a free meal and and the east coast, nah, the east coast are like Aussies. So if you're an Aussie travelling to America, stick with the east coast. California is like a, just a whole state full of Byron Bay. If you're a Queenslander, you probably want to go to Florida, then you'll meet a whole lot more Queenslanders.
green signal. again. Light. Halfway there. Tree in the face. Another one. about that 640 miles in the ACS 64. Most of that driving was probably in building the tutorials for how to drive it. approached quite a few organisations around getting details about ATCS and Access so I could make my tutorial because information available on the internet is quite scarce. And I wasn't having a lot of luck until I found some training courses made by Alstom, delivered by a university in Baltimore for train drivers and they'd left all the course files public, so I was quite happy. Must be going downhill, I think. Let's just slow us down a little, because I'm getting a little bit too close to the trigger speed. be going down quite a steep hill to be maintaining 121 mile an hour with no throttle on.
going to start slowing down on the electric brakes because it does take a little while in this train. probably get hit by some adverse signalling soon. It just seems to be the way this particular route goes. Here's a little bug here too because you saw on the main display there it went into suppression but it didn't go into suppression on the ATCS access panel. I have found out from a real train driver that whenever it says the suppression on the left hand one it will always say suppression on the right hand one. And you can see what I mean about slowing down with about 50% braking on at the moment. I have uh, slowed down from 120 miles an hour and I'm just coming down to 85 now and it's taken two and a half miles to do that. So on a nice gentle braking curve, which is good for our passengers. There's a signal hiding behind a pole, but it's green. It is one area I wish Dovetail would pay a little more attention to. In this day and age, there is not a chance in hell that a signal is hiding behind something without a repeater. Railway companies are very, very careful about signal positioning these days. Here's our stop for Route 128. over here and on the rail driver to get rid of that bell we have to open the left hand doors on rail driver to open the right hand doors on the train because it's backwards i think i mentioned that before i'm getting pushed around by humans here <laughs> that's vaguely funny it's just someone standing in my back pushing me along I don't know why a camera has collisions with people, because it's just a camera. Why would it get pushed around? But it does. Doesn't he look dodgy? I actually find nearly all the dovetail people look kind of like serial killers. 
It's like this guy. Just strolling along looking for his next victim. There's not a sweet and innocent face amongst them. Doors closing. Back in the cab. You can hear the compressor running in the background there. The brakes are almost off. And away we go. Giant suckers in the back wake up and do their sucky thing. Thank you for the like, whoever that was. You know something I didn't do this week, and I will do it now while we're driving, and hopefully I won't mess it up. I didn't check to see if I have new subscribers this week. Okay, welcome to Doug. And... And an individual with Kenji characters, so I'm, I apologise, I don't know your name. But uh, thank you for driving. And Astro Far. Oh, and my spammer called Abigail, who keeps coming up and putting spam on my channel. I'll delete your spam shortly. And Stephen Crofts and Dudley Brook have all subscribed in the last seven days, and that appears to be everyone. Excellent. And I see there's some comments I haven't responded to, too. How lazy of me. I will deal with those after the stream, but uh, welcome to the new people. And thank you very much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. I get nothing out of it, except that it tells me that people like the content I put out, which helps me to work out what people like and what people don't like, and put out stuff that people like, because it's not much point putting out stuff that people don't like. There's that train that's always there. It's always up there. I don't think I've driven any service when there hasn't been a train sitting on that bridge and quite often two or three more sitting down the side here waiting for it. Alright, coming into Boston Back Bay, seven mile away. there isn't a speed restriction on that curve it seems to be tighter than the one that has got a speed restriction at the other end signal if you're not in the habit of calling your signals out um, it's something that we do because I operate on a, a preserve railway as a volunteer and the people operating in the cab do call the signals to each other first one to see it calls it and the second one has a look and confirms it
So it's a good habit to get into, particularly if you're trying to drive hardless. I keep the um, destination hard on because my route knowledge isn't good enough and probably never will be because I flip from route to route to route every time I play. It's rare that I'll play the same route two or three times in succession. didn't get into the braking quickly enough hopefully it'll let me get away with that no I think it's gonna stop me that's okay I was too busy reading someone's comment on another video I shouldn't have started looking at that All right, we could acknowledge that, and the brakes will come off as they are now. Once that needle drops to zero, the needle I'm looking at is the bottom left red one. Now I should be able to power up again. When your speed changes from ATCS or AXIS, you have to get into the right hand panel showing suppression. So this panel here has to show suppression there very, very quickly and acknowledge what it's asked you to do as well. So you get the brakes on first and then acknowledge. And we have a yellow signal which has to be acknowledged. We'll probably have another speed drop before we get to the station, most likely. It feels suddenly really cold in my house. I have a faint suspicion we've had a big temperature drop outside. It's a bummer because I was hoping to go for a bike ride today. Since we're finally allowed to go 10 kilometres from home. Still not showing suppression on the right hand panel, but I've got the maximum possible braking on. It's not stopping me at least. Do 
we have no lights on. Hmm. Try and get round the front. Can't. Okay. Right, open the doors, right hand doors, so of course, left hand button in this train. Kill the annoying bell. It's going up here for no readily apparent reason. Just because I can, because we have to sit here anyway. I'll come and visit the council workers. G'day, mates. What we doing? Nothing, right? Yep, good to know. Okay. We come on, turn down this side. Fly our little drone along at foot level. Hopefully, I won't get another train come in and whack me. Actually, just before we jump back in, I did want to see if the lights were on. They are not. There we go. Now that in engine dot any setting I put on, so they're much closer when they're bright. All right, so lock the doors, release the brakes because they won't completely release till the doors are locked anyway. And it's America, so you be as loud as possible. And off we go. I don't want to build up much speed anyway because we have a yellow signal coming up. Which will have to be acknowledged. Annoying Beelzebub off. And acknowledge the signal. off I always find it a little bit amusing that um, particularly on American railways a little bit in Australia as well you go hell for leather out in away from the cities and in the cities you crawl I know the XPT going from between Melbourne and Sydney is like that 
they always talk about putting on a faster train and you know shaving 30 minutes off the day for the the run but you can shave 30 minutes off the run by setting it up so the train can go at line speed on the way into its destination you don't need a special train they need one with a bit more grunt when you get up into the mountains I'm sticking at 15 deliberately rather than the 20 that it allows because sometimes on this corner it whacks you and you have to do 15. Especially since I'm coming up to a restricting signal that I can't even see because it's round the corner and it usually clears before you get to see it. See? 15. And 10. I like the amount of action that you get at Boston Station, there's doesn't seem to matter what time of the day, there's um, people going in and out, which is good. Dresden does not give me that feeling of a busy route. Dresden's just like all the other routes in Train Sim, it's not as busy as it probably should be. So I think they failed the rush hour concept on Dresden. but they did pretty well on this one. And I would be not too surprised if we see the first streams for BML come out this coming week. We'll probably see a preview stream for it, I would think. And we would see it released the week after. It's just a guess. I have no knowledge. And I deliberately hadn't set up any stream schedules after this week because I didn't know if BML would come out or not. But given that we haven't done any preview streams this week, I will come up with something else for next week. If you have any requests, you know where to find me on the Dovetail forums. Or you can go to steamengine.com.au and put in a contact request there too. can't send messages on YouTube which is kind of sad yet yet on my other account I'm in the creators forum I know that's coming almost at the end of the run thank you very very much for watching I appreciate it if you're not subscribed please do just helps the channel grow a little bit. I'm not under any delusion that I will ever get popular enough that I'm going to make a living out of this thing. It's just nice to see the numbers go up because it just gives you a bit of an indication that you're doing something vaguely useful or interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, end of the line. All change, please, unless, of course, you're going back again, in which case you can stay on and see the conductor and he will take some money from you. So, all good. Yeah, they got off quick, didn't they? Apparently they're already off. Apparently they're already off, anyway. Now it wants me to unlock the doors again, despite showing... Oh, no, it's all good. It's green now. Don't need to do anything. No, it does want me to unlock them. All right. Either way is fine. So this train terminates here. No great surprise at that because it can't go anywhere else. No, I'm pretty sure I did unlock the doors again. I'm pretty sure there's people getting out. So Silly game. What doors locked? They were unlocked. I think it's just stuck. There we go. Use the keyboard. 
Sometimes the rail driver just doesn't work, as we've seen. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Chuck a subscribe if you like it. Chuck a like on if you like it. So enjoy yourselves very much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you get a whole day. If you're here, well, it's morning already. So have fun. See you next week. Um, I'm starting to stream on Thursdays too, by the way. Thursdays in the Australian evening times. And that's going... I'm planning on that being more about educating about trains and driving prototypically. So... Look forward to that one if you're interested. Bye now. I welcome any and all feedback. Feel free to comment on the video. Constructive criticism is welcome, especially if I've got something wrong. I stream every Sunday morning starting at 8.30am, and I also do ad hoc streams from time to time during the week. Please subscribe and click notify to avoid missing out. Subscribing helps me by helping me see what content is good and how it helps the channel grow or doesn't, as the case may be.